Hi friends, I am Dr. Pratap Singh Rathor. I have done MD in forensic medicine and today we will discuss about diagnosis of brainstem death. Brainstem death is diagnosed by doing tests but even then there are criteria which were been proposed to diagnose brain death. This includes Howard criteria and Minnesota criteria which are proposed. In Howard's criteria, first point in Howard's criteria is unreceptivity and unresponsivity. In this, there is total unawareness to external applied stimuli and inner need and complete unresponsiveness to even the most intense painful stimuli. This point tells that when the person is unresponsive to even the strongest stimuli, even the strongest painful stimuli like pinching or rubbing the knuckles on the sternum, if the person is unresponsive, that is unresponsivity is present. Next point is no movements. In this, if there is no spontaneous muscular movement in response to stimuli such as pain, touch, sound or light for a period of at least one hour, then it is considered as one of the points for in high words criteria. So if there is even there is no movements or small muscle twitching when painful stimuli is given, then it is a, becomes a one of the criteria for high words. Apnea, that is absence of spontaneous breathing for at least one hour. So when the person is unable to spontaneously breathe, then it's considered as one of the points. So this is done by when the patient, in case of where patient is in ventilator, the, when the patient is on ventilator, the total absence of spontaneous breathing may be established by turning off the respirator for three minutes and observing whether there is an effort on the part of the subject to breathe spontaneously. So if the patient is already in ventilator, to know whether the person has apnea, the ventilator is stopped for three minutes and check, check whether the person is spontaneously able to breathe. If it is unable to breathe, then it is considered as one of the points for high words. Next point is absence of respiratory reflexes. So for there are reflexes are tested to know whether the reflexes are present or absent. First is pupils reflex where when the light is thrown at pupils, pupils are fixed and dilated and do not respond to direct source of bright light. When the, when the bright light is thrown on the pupils, it is unresponsive. Occlusal movements and blinking are absent if corneal reflex is elicited. There is no evidence of posterior activity when the body is moved, vestibular reflex is absent. Cornea and pharynx reflexes are absent. Stretch tendon reflexes cannot be elicited also. Stretch tendon reflexes examples include knee jerk or biceps or triceps jerk if it is elicited, it is absent. Irreversible coma. A person is in coma stage, there is Evidence is the part of absence of restive reflexes. There is ap as in when there is no reflexes absent. Plus, the person is already coma. He is unresponsive. Isoelectric EEG. EEG is electroencephalogram where they place electrodes on the scalp and measure the brain waves. So, in this, if there is no electric activity in the brain, the there is the EEG shows isoelectric means there is it is shows a plain line. So single line it shows that it indicates there is no brain activity. So if it is of a conformity value, when these six points are met, Hiver's criteria is met to diagnose brain dead. So when these are all absent, then it can be considered as the person is brain dead. This test should be repeated after 24 hours for final confirmation of brainstem death. So according to Hiver's criteria, when these tests are to if repeated after 24 hours, twice it is done, then only that person is considered as brainstem death. In Minnesota criteria, it is proposed by Mohan Das and Chow. First point is, person is there should be diagnosed. Person has to be known, yeah, has a known but irreparable intercranial lesion. So, according to this criteria, it is only considered if there is person has some intercranial lesion and it is known and it is not treatable. So, if there is irreversible any lesion is present in the brain. It may be a tumor or sometimes a hemorrhage. And if it is irreparable or cannot be treated, then the criteria is considered. Because of that lesion, the person may have no spontaneous movement because already brain is dead. So person is similar to Minnesota criteria. The person is unable to move. There is no reflexes present. EEG is not mandatory in this criteria. 
so eg is not measured also spinal reflex is also not measured so when we consider about if the lesion in the brain movement of the body and reflexes and when these changes are remain for 12 hours then only is considered as brain stem death according to minnesota criteria compared to hours criteria in hours criteria 24 hours apart two tests is done in more in minnesota criteria the tests are done for at least for 12 hours twice so that is about criteria which are proposed for brain stem death now coming to how the diagnosis is done usually before diagnosing pre condition has to be met the patient should be deeply comatose that is unresponsive patient must be on ventilator that is that that means that he cannot breathe by himself cause of coma must be known so if coma cause of coma is known that tells that whether it is treatable or not treatable if the cause is not known that indicates that we are not in the place to know whether the person is treatable or not so if cause is known and it is not treatable then we we can diagnose the person is is brain stem death or not who can diagnose brain stem death so test should be performed by two medical practitioners preferably because personal opinions matter sometimes opinion differ may differ doctor should be expert in his field and doctor should perform that all the tests twice so what are the tests so first we test the reflexes so we will mainly the test includes testing of functioning of cranial nerves so first is diagnosing of whether pupil reflexes are present pupils are fixed in diameter and do not respond to change in the intensity of light so when the intensity of light is increased also the pupils remain same then there is no cornea reflex when the cornea is tested touched with the cotton wisp there is no blinking that is present uh, is absent then there is no vestibular actor reflex and the body is moved there is no change in the eyes movement there is no motor response to painful or sensory stimuli if the person is stimulated with any painful stimuli also the person is not responding gag reflex is also absent when even if there is pharynx is touched the person is not coughing or there is no gag gag reflex present then there is no respiratory movement when the patient is disconnected from the ventilator so again the person is tested for whether the person is able to do spontaneous breath again is tested and apnea is present so if he is in ventilator the ventilator is stopped to know whether the person is able to breathe or not so these all six test when two doctors have performed this test twice with negative results the patient patient is pronounced dead so this has to be done twice by two doctors preferably and then only the person is considered as brain stem death after declaring brain stem death only the patient if the if all the organs are also also dead then the patient is sent for cremation or given to relatives for cremation or if the patient who was dead has donated his organs then if the brain if person is brain dead he can give the organs like liver or kidney can be donated for him so for organ donation the person has to be brain stem dead thank you i hope you understood about diagnosing brain stem death